Hey everybody and welcome back to some more Oxygen Not Included. It's cycle 169 and we are in full damage control mode at this point in time. In the last episode, we spent maybe a bit too much time and energy and focus working on this new setup down here. We got ourselves the oil refinery, we got the polymer press, the natural gas generator and a system to actually allow it all to function and Although it does work, and although we did produce our very first piece of plastic, it came at a cost. And that cost is that the rest of our base is very much so on the brink of collapse right now. Our power generation is nearing its end. We have zero kilograms of coal, not even a single piece of coal in the entire base. So as soon as these coal generators run out of power, that is it. We are out of power until we go and mine some more. On top of that, our algae situation here is quite dire. We're at 579 kilograms of algae. Usually we have multiple tons in storage. And so any minute now, we're going to run out of oxygen. And on top of that, if we look at the base as a whole, you can see that we already don't have enough oxygen in the base to keep everybody happy. This little room up here with our bristle blossoms in is getting a little bit of oxygen and it is now cool enough for the bristle blossoms to grow, but the rest of the base is on the brink of being barely breathable and the bedrooms are actually um, already at the point where they are barely breathable, which I think is one of the main reasons why stress is starting to creep up in the base. For the most part, it's doing okay right now, but if we go and have a look at uh, Hassan, he is not complaining about the oxygen just yet. He's complaining about being hungry and it all kind of feeds into itself. If the power goes out, then our lights go out up here and our bristle blossoms can no longer grow, at which point our duplicates can no longer make food. The, the gas range and the electric grill also go offline so the stuffed berries cannot be made. Um, on top of that, if the power goes out right now, that means that our oxygen supply goes away. And not only does the cooling portion of it go away, but the oxygen diffusers themselves also require power to run. And so that goes offline. Our algae generation system goes offline. And so everything right now is kind of hanging on the fact that we do not have enough power or enough coal to give us enough power to get things going. And so I think what I'm going to do at the start of today's episode is take a bit of a step back and take down some systems that we've set up recently until we've got a more sustainable and reliable source of power. So what I mean by that is this setup over here, for example, does a pretty good job at generating and cooling oxygen. However, if we look at the power requirements here, this setup is using well in excess of a thousand watts just to have this running, which is more than one of these three coal generators at, tuned up and running at max speed just to keep the system going. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disable quite a lot of the buildings around the base, especially the ones that we can do without for the time being. I'm also going to disable the um, deoxidizers here because I think what I'm going to do is very temporarily place down the deoxidizers back up here where they were originally just to try and get that oxygen circling around the base again. And I might even put a few down here as well because we are really in a bit of a dire situation when it comes to, uh, to oxygen right now. So we'll hook both of those up like so. I am going to stay paused for a little bit here because I don't want things to get worse uh, whilst we are trying to fix things here. This setup I don't think is required. Uh, going forward, my plan is once we get the cooling system back online, we will hopefully have some of the oxygen from over here filter off and come through to this one Atmos suit dock right here. And so we can actually go ahead and uh, fully delete these. We don't need the pump, we don't need the deoxidizer, and we don't need the gas filter either, so we can get rid of that. I think we can get away with turning one of these off if we disable one of these pumps. I think one pump should be more than enough to uh, to keep this going. You'll notice we have filled up this gas reservoir here, and so any minute now, we are about to have too much natural gas, and it's going to start backing up uh, and not being able to go through the gas pump. I do have a plan to fix that, which hopefully we'll get to a little bit later on in today's episode. Also, uh, you'll notice that we do have quite a lot of chlorine here, uh, making its way into the base and ever since we got rid of this piece of wall here uh, the chlorine can now come on through into the actual base and um, if we leave that open i think we're going to end up with a lot more chlorine in here especially due to the fact that we don't have 
a lot of oxygen. The lower the density of oxygen in the base, the easier it is for other gases to move in. Uh, this is also another problem uh, up at the top here. You'll notice that the floral scent is leaking out of this room. And up until now, this hasn't really been a problem because of the fact that the air pressure on the outside of the room was so much higher than on the inside of the room. But in the last episode, we put a vent in this room. And so now in this room, the air is very pressurized. There's a lot of oxygen, a lot of gas in this room. And so as soon as the door opens, the oxygen and with it, the floral scent bursts out into this main area here, which of course is not a good thing because it means that as soon as Mima comes out of her bedroom into the rest of the base, she has an allergic reaction, her stress goes up and that is not good. So. Priority number one, getting oxygen back online. Priority number two, getting power back online because without power, we can't get oxygen. I'm going to disable the heater for now. I'm hoping this area up here is hot enough. 42 degrees seems hot enough. And so hopefully they will stay online for a little while. We do want to keep an eye on this because this is going to be one of the first things that we turn back on because food is another one of those top priorities. Power, food, and oxygen are really the core things that I want to work on in today's episode. Temperature is also a thing that's on my radar. I've noticed that because we don't have the um, insulin a tile here and here this room is getting a little too hot 37 degrees is a bit warm for a room that somebody sleeps in and so and um, at some point i do want to put mesh tile up over there but that is not a priority for today's episode uh, speaking of power i do of course want to disconnect this wire right here um, i contemplated disconnecting this wire but if you disconnect the atmosuit docks from power your duplicates can no longer go through the atmosuit checkpoint at all and that would thus lock us out of this entire area over here, which is not a good thing because we actually are probably gonna need quite a bit of this coal here in today's episode. And speaking of coal, one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a uh, dig task over here to dig out some of this coal, and I'm gonna set it at the highest possible priority because we desperately need this coal over here. This is gonna be a top priority issue. If we don't have the coal, our whole base is gonna come to a halt. We're not gonna get oxygen and things are gonna go downhill really, really fast. And so I think that's pretty much everything that I wanna take off line oh that does remind me actually i am going to temporarily disable all of the lights in the base apart from the ones that are working on the bristle blossom again it's a small thing it's only a little bit of power right now but we really need all the power we can get at this moment in time so i'll hit play i'll let them get to work turning the machines off um that does also remind me that this machine over here uh, needs to be deleted never mind being turned off but does also need to be turned off as well um i think we can go ahead and disable a few of these um, algae distillers here we only need one or two of these online and that does also remind me this one can be disabled and this can be disabled for the time being i think it's okay if they come and manually get the algae it is going to take up more of the duplicates time but it's going to save us on power and again that's kind of the main thing that we really just don't have at this moment in time is power and so trying to prioritize that above everything else is really what we're working on uh, at the start of today's episode here as I mentioned before, I will also put down, um, I think, I should probably put a door here, right? I really do want to put, like, an airlock there, but I think for now I'll just put a door there. I'm not going to hook up to power because, again, we don't have the power. And it might even not be a bad idea to go through and, and potentially disconnect some of the, uh, some of the mechanical doors. They don't use a lot of power, but they do use some power, right? And thus, the power in our base is just... Well, we're using way too much of it. I spent a bit of time looking through the colony summary graph between episodes, and one of the graphs that stood out to me most was uh, this one right here, the average power produced. Because, of course, our coal generators are set up in a way that they only produce power when we need it, right? Because of the fact that they only produce power when the battery falls below 20% uh, fullness, they will only produce power if we're using the power. And so this graph effectively is... A graph of how much power we're using and you'll see that around cycle 137 we produced about 540 kilojoules of power and then within a few cycles that had skyrocketed to nearly 1500 kilojoules almost triple the amount of power being used per cycle which is insanity and i think we may have expanded just a little bit too far on the power front put down a few too many machines um, a little bit too early what we need to do is kind of take a step back set up some more reliable power and then push forward again and try and get those automatic systems up and running i am going to set these to priority eight because i really do want them to get these things turned off like it is it is a top priority right now if we don't get these turned off then the base is going to run out of power and everything is going to go badly skill wise we will go and give frankie a new skill here i think improved carrying is probably a good fit i don't really think he needs to do uh, crop tending or critter ranching just yet so yeah we'll give him improved carrying again he is doing all of the cooking and so being able to move food around um quicker or being able to carry more food is always going to be useful um i will also disable the carbon skimmer for now 
Carbon dioxide really isn't an issue. You'll see there's mostly chlorine around this area here. Most of the carbon dioxide is down in the power room, and thus it's not getting cleaned by, um, by our machine here. So we'll turn that off as well. And hopefully, we should see the power in our base drop quite significantly. Now, I did mention previously that we could try and get these shine bugs over into this room over here and effectively kill two birds with one stone in that we could turn the lights off to save some power and also to reduce the temperature in this room, at which point we wouldn't need the gas vent, at which point it would be less likely that the germs would float out. And on top of that, it would continue to allow our bristle blossoms to grow without the need for the uh, the wheezewort here. So I would love if we could put down uh, two airborne critter bits i'm not quite sure how these work i've not done this before but if we put two of these down in here hopefully we can capture one if not both of these uh, these shine bugs and then maybe release them up into this room here we might need a critter drop-off point to make that happen i'm not too sure but that should be doable if needs be i will set a fairly high priority dig on some of this coal here because it is desperately needed throughout the base we'll also grab like this stuff as well whilst we're at it and there is quite a bit of coal around here. You can see there's a lot here. There's a ton over here. So we're not really light on coal. What we are light on right now is algae. So real quick, I'm going to do a priority nine dig over here and a priority nine ladder for this so that they can actually grab all of the algae in this area. Again, algae is another one of those things where we've actually got quite a bit of algae still left around the map. Like you can see, there's quite a bit around here in the slime biome that we've yet to harvest. Uh, there's a bunch down here in our uh, nature reserve. There's a ton down here in uh, in this biome and then get more over in uh, in the next slime biome over here. So a good amount of algae for us to, uh, to tap into and grab. So that shouldn't be an issue really, at least not in uh, in the short term but long term i'm thinking we might want to pivot over and try and do a little bit of electrolyzing the electrolyzer allows us to turn water into hydrogen and oxygen and i'm thinking what we can do with that is use the hydrogen to power a hydrogen generator thus producing an extra 800 watts of power for the base that's before the generator is tuned up presumably it would go up to over a thousand watts once it was tuned up and on top of that we could get a nice supply of oxygen to keep our base you know going without the need for an endless supply of algae of course that does require water which i think is actually quite abundant right now maybe even one of our most abundant resources uh, we do have all of these ice biomes which can be melted down into uh, water and uh, all of the slime biomes are just full of polluted water it is kind of all over the map at this moment in time and so I'm thinking that might be something that we should look into. The only downside to a setup with the electrolytic separator is that both the hydrogen and the oxygen that come out both come out at, I think, around 70 degrees. They both come out very, very hot. And so if we were to use that oxygen in the base, it would have to go through our cooling system. And on top of that, I don't think that the thermoregulator is good enough to take the temperature of oxygen down from 70 degrees to say 20 degrees that's quite a big jump you know 50 degrees celsius i think this can do more in the range of like 15 degrees celsius and so i've been thinking about setting that up over here if we build a room like at the center of this ice biome over here with an electrolytic separator that pumps out hydrogen and oxygen and then we have that hydrogen and oxygen piped back into the base as it is piped through the cold biome hopefully that cold biome will absorb quite a large amount of the heat and then we'll also send it through the thermoregulator at which point it should hopefully be cool enough for the rest of the base that's my work in progress plan at least we'll see how well that works out in practice but thankfully, it looks like oxygen is doing well again. We've actually got quite a nice amount of oxygen around the base. And most of the places that the duplicants spend their time seem to be doing just fine. Food is also doing okay. We've got stuffed berries. We've got meal lice, things for people to eat, which is always good. Um, we did have two duplicants sick just a second ago, but I think one of them, maybe Hassan, has just recovered. So now it's only Frankie who has slime lung. And the stress is, I think, slowly but surely uh, going down as well, which is fantastic. So... Another issue that we need to work on is this over here, our natural gas. And I think this is another area in which we can kind of kill two birds with one stone in that we can get rid of the excess natural gas and in doing so also produce some power. So, of course, the natural gas generator is a thing. And I think I'm going to put one right about here for now. This is a very temporary setup. Um, or maybe not. Maybe it's not a temporary setup. I'm not quite sure. But for now, it feels temporary because this is a weird location for the natural gas generator. But... What we don't want to do is pump all of our gas into the natural gas generator. We don't even want to pump half of our gas into the natural gas generator. You know, if we could just do something like this and half of the gas would end up in there. But if we did that, 
then eventually there would potentially come a time when there's not enough gas to cook food, at which point our duplicants would starve and, you know, the colony would collapse. Instead, what I'm thinking here is that we utilize some of the automation in the game to only send natural gas to the natural gas generator when there is excess natural gas in the pipes here. What I mean by that is that if we go to ventilation, there is a gas pipe element sensor. And so what I'm thinking is if we do something like this, it becomes a little bit janky, but I'm gonna delete this pipe here, mostly because I do not want this pipe to connect to this pipe, I want it to go around like this. And we're gonna put our elemental sensor right about there. And then what that does is it sends out a green signal if there is a specific gas in the pipe that it's on. So in our case, we wanna scan for natural gas. Now, of course, there's always going to be natural gas in this pipe or almost always going to be natural gas in this pipe in small quantities because even when the setup is working correctly, the natural gas is going to be moving through this pipe and going up to the reservoir. And so to mitigate that, what we can do is under the automation tab here, there is a filter gate which only lets a green signal through if the input has, a, uh, has received a green signal for longer than the selected filter time. So this way, it will only send out a solid green signal for the natural gas generator to come online if there is a solid amount of natural gas in the pipe that's not moving. So if the natural gas setup gets backed up all the way to this pipe here, which is quite a long way, there's a lot of pipe between here and the reservoir, but if it gets backed up all the way to here, at that point, and only at that point, the system will kick in, the natural gas generator will come online, and it will start using some of that natural gas until the point that there is no natural gas backed up on this tile here, at which point it will shut down the natural gas generator, and the gas will continue to pump over into its uh, normal area. And so I'm going to go ahead and rotate this like so. Yep, that is correct. And then automation wire, we're going to have the input there and the output like so. And I think that should work out just fine now i have just remembered actually that the natural gas generator does produce polluted water and carbon dioxide so real quick i am going to delete that i'm also going to cancel uh, this real quick i'm just going to move it up by a few tiles maybe even move it over as well and set up like a little tank for the polluted water so we can kind of catch it and store it for the time being we don't really want the polluted water just sitting here because eventually it's going to fill up and it's going to stop the natural gas generator from uh, from working so we'll disable that Again, not a huge priority, because so I'm not going to bump that up just yet, although it does look like our duplicants have uh, have got some free time because they've gone and done that right away, which is fantastic. We are up at 4,000 kilograms of coal now. I'm hoping that we can kind of get back to an equilibrium where our hatches are providing enough coal for the power in our base to, to continually run. At that point, we can kind of focus in on maybe trying to get the um, electrolyzer set up, try and get the hydrogen going, uh, maybe even look into um, more renewable sources of power. For example, another thing that we could do, uh, speaking of the hydrogen generator, is we could look around the base for a hydrogen geyser. And oh man, look at that. It looks like, um, kind of looks like a fist, right? Like you got a neck down here and then like a chin and a nose, a little dent for the eyes and then like a head. It's not perfect. He's got a bit of a lump on his head there, but it does kind of look like um, a bit of a face. But nevertheless, we found this guy already, which is a chlorine geyser, which pumps out, I think they call them vents now. Yeah, a chlorine gas vent. They used to call them geysers earlier in the, uh, the game's development. And the vents essentially pump out unlimited of a certain resource. So this geyser here, this vent, will continually pump out chlorine into this area. And so you could just put a gas pump here and you know you would have an unlimited supply of chlorine if you needed it. Now, somewhere on the map, there are also steam vents, which pump out limitless supplies of steam, which could, of course, then be cooled into water. And there are also natural gas vents, which are really what we're looking for, because the natural gas vents not only provide us with unlimited natural gas, which we could use for unlimited power with natural gas generators, but the natural gas generators also produce polluted water, which we can then use to generate unlimited oxygen, unlimited hydrogen, power from the hydrogen generator, oxygen for our duplicates to breathe, all that good stuff. And so uh, doing some digging around we might be able to find that steam geyser. I think there is at least one on every map generated. And I've no idea where it could be. It could be anywhere on the map, I think. And I, I had a bit of scouring between episodes to see if maybe we've got like a little, you know, a little pocket somewhere that could kind of show us. Because you can kind of tell um, if you've got like a little pocket or a little half pocket that has uh, natural gas in it. You can usually tell that that's where the, uh, the vent is. Unfortunately, I've not seen one. Uh, but what we could do is just start having our duplicates dig out in different directions now the map is much taller than it is wide like the map is not very wide it goes out maybe to like here and here but the map is very tall like it goes very far down and very high up so it might make more sense to kind of maybe dig out this way potentially this way and just because this is where our ladder is and this is kind of the area that we can already dig out into and so 
that would be quite useful. There's also some uh, salt water there, but that's just another thing that is on my mind. Something I'm thinking about is potentially trying to find a, uh, a natural gas geyser so we can hopefully um, ease some of our, uh, our power wars going forward. I think I'll put this like right here and then have like a little mesh tile, which allows water to flow through it and do something like this and maybe get rid of these and also potentially these as well so we can have uh, normal tiles down either side. I think that could work out quite well. We are, of course, going to have to have a gas pipe like so. And initially, this is going to fill up with natural gas. So this is always going to store a little buffer of natural gas. But that gas shouldn't be used if the natural gas generator is uh, is not online. So it looks like we've actually done a fairly okay job of damage control here. The base is full of oxygen again, which is good. And we should see, yeah, there's a lot less of the uh, the floral scent here, mostly just because the air is just so much more dense now. And again, it's going to be so much harder for that uh, floral scent to get out of this room now that it's more dense on the outside. So that's good. The temperature is okay up here for now. Although, you know, I, I do see that one flickering below 35 degrees Celsius. So that could be a bit of an issue going forward. We've got 9.7 tons of algae. Uh, speaking of which, I will go ahead and schedule some digs here and here so that hopefully we can get our distillers back online. And uh, I'm really hoping that uh, our distillers being online is not going to be uh, too much of an issue. Uh, please do not suffocate down here, my friend. Can we get like a um, yellow alert build on these ladders here so that our friend can escape? Thank you. And then we'll build tile like this and like this so that any water that's here does flow down into this section. And eventually, if we wanted to, we could put like a pump here and start pumping that polluted water out and uh, to other parts of the base. This, guys, does not need to be a yellow alert priority. I appreciate that you all came down here to get the work done, but it does not need to be this way. Although this is an important dig, it's not that important of a dig, just yet at least. So one of the issues we are going to run into here, of course, is the fact that the natural gas generator produces 800 watts of power. Now, one of the reasons why I said that this is not going to be its final resting place is that ideally we want it in the power plant so we can tune it up to produce more power. Although I guess it might not be worth it given that this thing's not going to be online that often anyway. So I think for now it might be okay to just... Ah, I was going to say just hook this up to the network, but I don't think that's a good idea because it might overload the part of the network that it's on. Although I guess we could just have... I think it should be fine, right? If we just put down like a, a smart battery, say right about here. No, we'll put the smart battery not there. We'll put it like up here. Again, it's going to be a little awkward. And again, I've accidentally set all my stuff to uh, to yellow alert here. Let me set that back down to uh, to priority six. Uh, we do need to build some tile underneath there. Let's set that to priority six so it stops alerting people. But uh, we want to have it there so that we can have a separate bit of, um, of wiring here. And so on top of the automation wiring for this i guess we're gonna have to have like some form of gate here like an and gate or an odd gate so that um the generator can take the inputs of both of these set areas like right now we can go ahead and we can hook this up like so and now because of the fact that this pipe here is full of natural gas it's sending out a green signal that this should be on and this is good to go you can turn on you can start using the natural gas um but, but before we uh, do build these real quick guys i would also like to put down um i think the end gate would mean that it'd have to have a green signal from both, which I think is what we want, right? We want an end gate like this, and then the automation wire coming out of the other side, like so, we can get rid of this one. And so essentially now what we're saying is if there is natural gas available, and if the battery up here is not full, at that point, the natural gas generator can come online and can start doing its thing. We do have to get rid of the carbon dioxide. And so for now, I'm just gonna do something like this, I'm sending the gas vent up a little bit because this area down here is already a little dense in the carbon dioxide realm. And so if we do something like that, that uh, should hopefully let us continue to pump out carbon dioxide for the time being. And then we will hook you up to here. And then from there, we will, for now at least, just go ahead and hook that up like so. That is going to limit the power of this machine to only being able to power this area of the base, which I don't really love. I think it's going to be better if we have it power this bit of the base you know the bit that keeps like the oxygen online and keeps our food online and all that kind of stuff it might overload the network if more than a thousand watts of power are used like after this point but then again i don't know there are quite a lot of things up here we'll see how it goes we'll, we'll, we'll set it up and uh, if the network does get overloaded we can find some other way of trying to hook this up the easiest way to do it from like a network overload standpoint would have been to run heavy watt wire directly from the gas generator down into our existing battery but 
that's a lot of heavy watt wire and heavy watt wire of course doesn't go through walls you have to have the heavy watt plate and so that wouldn't have been easy like from a logistics standpoint from actually building the infrastructure required for that threshold wise we'll do the simple 90 and 10 like so and so this should hopefully just burn through some of the excess natural gas that we have and, uh, and keep us in a little bit of extra power as and when we need it, which is good. How are we doing on everything else? Stuffed berries are on the rise. 30,000 kilocalories is fantastic. Uh, we should probably look towards allowing our other duplicates to eat these, our two uh, newest duplicates, because if we don't, then any second now they're going to not have enough meal lice to sustain them and they're going to start to starve, which is, of course, not what we want. Germ-wise, the base is looking pretty good. We do have one person ill, although I'm assuming that Frankie is pretty close to uh, no longer being ill. Yeah, he's got 1.1 cycles left, so only one more cycle uh, until recovery. Not great that he's coughing all over the food, and that might actually infect some uh, some other people and might infect the um, the food as well. But that's not something I'm too worried about just yet. Also, zombie spores? Select an infected object for more details. What are zombie spores? We don't have any, which is, I guess, a good thing. But still, like, that's that's pretty crazy. Um, do we not have any copper ore for this? We do. I'm going to cancel that real quick and uh, specify that I want them to use copper ore for the building of this wire here. The other wire is connected. That's good. We do, of course, want that wire connecting down like so. And I think, guys, that we are pretty much back to being somewhat stable here. Stress is on the decline. Uh, Mima is going up in stress a little bit there. I did see her just bump from uh, 7 to 8. Why is Mima stressed? We've got so many duplicates now. Um, she got low morale. Oh, okay. So there is possibly an issue here with the fact that now that we're not going through the nature reserve multiple times an episode, um, I think people are getting a little bit sadder. What we could do is just force Mima to go into the nature reserve. There's no reason for it, but if we do that, that might bump her morale up. Like, now her morale is above 18. I think it was at 13 before, and now it's higher. That's interesting. It kind of makes me think that even though it might take them longer, it might not be a bad idea to maybe move the food room over to, like, here, so they have to go through the nature reserve to get to the food room. Again, that does increase travel time, but it is going to increase morale, hopefully quite a bit. Even so, though, they were at, like, 30 morale before, so morale has definitely gone down quite a bit. Grizzly meal. Are you not eating the, um, the berries, my friend? Consumables. Mima, you should be eating nothing apart from the finest stuffed berries, which give a plus 12 to morale. So, I have no idea what she's been eating, but she should definitely not be eating anything other than those, uh, other than those berries. So... This is disabled by the grid. That's because the battery is full, and that's because the power is just not required right now. Now, I kind of want there to be a way, and I mean, there is a way, but I, I kind of want there to be an easier way of us not having to, uh, like, to prioritize this battery over this battery so the network uses that one first. For now, I think the way we can do that is just... Um, to kind of disconnect this wire temporarily because I do want them to actually start using natural gas. I'm a little bit worried that the base is going to get flooded with natural gas if we uh, if we don't start using it. So we'll delete that real quick and hopefully this will uh, bring this online just as soon as we actually uh, get in here and build the logic because the logic is currently not actually online. I think actually what's happened here is that this battery was filled up by the power from this network down here. Is there a way for us to stop that? I think there is, right? We could use a transformer I think that would stop the power going the opposite direction. Yeah, I think I will do that. Again, it's going to look a little janky here, but if we do something like this, and instead of having the power go uh, directly down like that, if we have the power go up into here and then you know down into here, I think that might work out better. That way, this battery doesn't end up getting filled up by power from the rest of the network, which, of course, is disconnected right now, but in the future... Is, uh, is not going to be disconnected. And of course, once that wire is set up here, I would like to put a tile down like so. And I would prefer, guys, if the tiles were a little bit of a higher priority. I do realize that you guys cannot get down over on this side. That is fine. I will build a little bit of a ladder there so you guys can actually get down there. This is okay. We can always go ahead and mop up the bit of um, polluted water that comes out of this. It's not ideal, but it will be fine for now. You know, we can just mop this up and, uh, and everything should be okay. But yeah, I think it's a bit of a, a maybe an overcomplicated setup. I'm not too sure, but it should get the job done. It should make sure that our natural gas always goes to this reservoir first, if possible, so that we always have power available for our machines, which is a little bit funny, actually, because right now we actually have no power available for our machines. So I will bump that up to uh, priority seven to hopefully uh, get the power 
up and running again very quickly here. I don't think it's going to be a huge deal. We are ahead on oxygen and ahead on food, so everything should hopefully be okay. Insufficient gold. Are we again out of copper? We are not. I'm not quite sure why it's defaulting to using resources like gold. I have a feeling that at some point in the future, we might have to go around and deconstruct all the things that I've accidentally made out of gold to reassemble them out of like copper or iron. So this is going down. This one is online. Right now, the um, the gate here has one green and one red. It needs two green to turn the generator on. And so once that falls below 20%, the generator comes online, starts filling up the battery, starts using some of that natural gas. How much natural gas does this use? It uses 90 grams per second, which I think is one of these, right? Let me check this real quick. Oh, no, it's nine of these. You need nine synthesizers to actually get one natural gas generator online. So this is fine. Again, it's not going to run all the time, but it is going to run some of the time and hopefully uh, keep things going here. I will, just for safety, because I know I'm going to forget, I will reconnect this wire here just to make sure that our entire base stays online. And I think with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's episode there. Um, a little bit of a shorter episode and also a little bit of an episode without much direction i didn't have like a concrete plan of what i wanted to get done in today's episode i mostly just had a plan that we needed to fix things everything needed to be sorted out um, everything needed to be kind of brought back down a notch so that things are more stable and sustainable like right now i think everything is at a bit more of an equilibrium uh, the coal generators seem to be doing okay although they are still going to call quite fast you know we're, we're 3,000 kilograms of coal, we were at 4,000 earlier. We're no longer going through, you know, thousands of kilograms of coal per day. Or at least, you know, overall, we're not going through thousands a day. We're making almost enough to keep up, although I think we are on a slight decline and might have to do a little bit more work on power. But next time we'll come back, we'll look into possibly setting up the electrolytic separator to get power that way. Um, we could even start to use something like uh, this natural gas generator with the oil refinery to do power that way. Um, and also we could maybe use the petroleum generator, which uses the petroleum made by the oil refinery to make, I think it's 2,000 watts of power out of the gate, which is um, pretty good, pretty crazy. Stress is down, oxygen is looking good. And uh, everything seems to be a bit more a bit more stable now, which is nice. And with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's episode of Oxygen Not Included there. As always, if you did enjoy the video and you want to see more in the future, be sure to go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos go out. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>